This video is brought to you by my seething hatred of High Guardian Spice. No, really. High Guardian Spice made me pick up an old story idea I had ages ago to prove that I could do better. High Guardian Spice? More like High Guardian Spite! <laughs> I am so lame. Anyway, as always, I'm starting with costume and character designs. The idea for the story, which for now I'm calling Divine Warrior Inazuma, is that six girls living in Japan are granted power by the Kami, the ancient Japanese pantheon, for those unfamiliar, to deal with... with... uh... I'm working on who or what the antagonist ought to be. Demons, maybe? Maybe some nut unsealed Shuten Doji's lair or whatever. I'll work on the plot later. I should note that all of the magical girls' outfits are based on traditional Japanese attire. Um, in an early draft, the similarities between the costumes and their inspirations were too blatant and there was no synergy, so I'm going to try and make the mesh a bit better. The main aspects tying the costume designs together is that they all feature a bodysuit under the main garment, which flares at the hips and ends in a tailcoat-like shape instead of a typical skirt, and the sleeves are wide, square, and end at the elbows. Their costumes also feature an obi, or uh, something like one. And they all wear a specific style of shoe that I just kinda, kinda made up. Also, each girl gets two colors based on which deity acts as their patron, except for the leader who gets one accent color. Lastly, each girl's hair color will either be a lighter or darker shade of one of the colors of their outfit, or will be the same as the accent color in the leader's case, and their eye color will match. I'll make civilian designs for them later once I get to making the finalized reference sheets, but I'm not going to do that right now. And without further ado, let's get started. First up, we're designing the leader of the team, Inazuma Sakamoto. Her patron is Suzano-o, the god of storms in the sea. Her patron... Er, patron. Her design is actually the base for all of the others. Um, which is why she looks a little generic. I, I was going to put like a big old ribbon on the back of her obi, but I forgot to. Um, just pretend she has that, pretend she has that. Um, her color scheme is the same as her patron's, so it consists of red and gray, with a lighter gray as the accent. Um, because I wanted her outfit to be somewhat more fancy than the others, um, okay, I'm gonna put the bow in a later drawing, um, but she also has cloudy patterns on her outer garment as her accent, in her accent color. Her weapon is a katana imbued with divine energy. It's... <laughs> it's a lightning katana. It's, how cool is that? Her hair is very long and put up in a braid for reasons pertaining to where the story originated. Actually, Divine Warrior Inazuma's origins are pretty funny. I came up with the concept when I was like eight and it stemmed from three things. One, I liked Junie B. Jones as a little kid. Two, I had watched the Garfield's Pet Force movie and become obsessed with superheroes. And three... I'd recently discovered fanfiction.net. This was right when AO3 was first made, and I'd never heard of it. So, Divine Warrior Inazuma originally started as a Junie B. Jones superhero AU based on Pet Force. I wish I was making this up, but I'm not. In fact, there's a good number of elements from that AU that made it into the final story. Um, for example, the patron Kami thing actually comes from the fact that the main characters had elemental powers originally. Uh, okay, for reference, Inazuma was originally an AU version of Junie B. Jones. She was, I think, just called June. Uh, uh, the others, let's see, Kazane originally was Grace. Haru was originally Lucille. Um, Natsumi and Natsuki were originally Kamiel and Sheniel, and then Miyuki, um, she was actually, she actually started as an OC named Abby. Um, anyway, the patron Kami thing actually comes from the fact that the main characters had elemental powers, as I said. Um, I think Junie B was lightning, so Inazuma has Suzanoo as her patron. Grace was air, so Kazane has Fujin. Lucille was nature, so Haru has Izanami. Kamil and Sheniel were fire, so Natsumi and Natsuki have Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi. And Abby was ice, so Miyuki has Kurokami. Um, yep, yeah, uh, I'm cringe. I've always been cringe. Uh, we, we all knew this. We all knew this. Um, moving on! Next, we have Kazane Imai. 
As I said earlier, her patron is Fujin, the god of wind. Her outfit is more masculine than the others and is loosely based on traditional Ainu clothing. Because, fun fact, Kazane's family is Ainu. Her colors are green and black, so her hair and eye color are kind of a mint green. Her weapon is a trident, which always comes back to her if thrown. Yeah, <laughs> that thing, that thing right there, it's supposed to be a ranged weapon. Though she uses it more for up close and personal melee, since that's more her style and really more what you would use a trident for in combat. Um, really, there's not a whole lot else I can say about her design wise. That's really all there is to her. Um, so, on to the next one. Now for Haru Sugiyama, the team healer slash cleric. Her patron is Izanami, the goddess of creation and death. Because of that, her powers are the most OP, but they also have the greatest drawbacks. For example, she has an ability similar to the move Perish Song from Pokemon, which will quickly end a battle, but it will, mm, alivent her and her teammates as well. Anyway, I was a little mean when designing her. See, she's from a rich family and has super high expectations placed on her. So I based her outfit loosely on a Shrine Maiden's uniform. Um, her colors are pink and green because those colors show up on Izanami and a lot of old art. And it's also paying an homage to when she was an AU version of Lucille. In a nice little divergence from the others, her hair color is a darker shade of her main color. It also appears shorter because it's tied up in a bun. I like to think during her transformation, her hair starts off super long and straight, and then twists itself into that bun. Her weapon is a bow, which she can create magical arrows for out of either healing or draining magic, depending on what she wants to do. It sounds OP, because it is OP, but that's offset by the fact that early in the story, she can't hit the broadside of a barn. She's the most typically magical girl-looking character, but like, it's, it's whatever. Next is a double whammy. Natsumi and Natsuki Okamoto. Because they're twins, they have sibling patrons, Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, and Tsukuyomi, the god of the moon. For the same reason, their colors are complementary to each other. Pastel yellow and orange for Natsumi, and dark blue and purple for Natsuki. I had a stupid moment when doing their eye colors, and now you can't see Natsumi's irises. I'll fix that later. Their hairstyles are almost identical, with only slight differences because twins. I was originally going to have their weapons be linked, but later decided against it, and uh, went with them having opposite strengths and battle styles. Natsumi is physically very resilient, but can't do much damage on her own, and her weapon is a shield based on the 8-span mirror that reflects magical attacks. It can also, in a pinch, be used in tandem with her own magic for an attack that I call Sunny Day Death Ray. <laughs> On the flip side, Natsuki is a glass cannon with the ability to teleport, and her weapon is a long-handled sickle shaped like a crescent moon. It almost looks like a magical girl staff, which is hilarious. And last but not least, Miyuki Ichikawa. Her patron is a minor kami and a dragon, Kuro Kami, the, a minor god of rain and snow. I didn't know how to make her look draconic, and then it hit me great big anime pigtails that look like horns. Her outfit is slightly different from the others in that the bodysuit is ankle length rather than knee length. Gotta dress warmly when you have ice powers, you know. Her colors are cyan and white because, yeah, ice. Um, her weapon is a bow staff, but she doesn't use it like one. She's primarily reliant on her magic for combat, so she uses her staff as a magical focus. Though if push comes to shove, she can use it as a bludgeon. Fun fact about her, she is the only member of the team who does not live in or near Tokyo. She lives in Osaka, and she is actually the last member of the team that we meet. Because, you know, she lives in Osaka. Thanks for watching. This project, I swear I will see through to the end. It's such an interesting concept, and I think it would be a shame to let it sit in a folder somewhere and gather dust. I may or may not have started animating transformation sequences for the girls, and I'm working very hard on the plot. I've actually figured out in production what I want it to be, um, and you'll find out later. Though I have to make it clear that I'm not going to have as much time to work on personal projects. Since I'm working towards getting a part-time job IRL, and I plan to build up an animation portfolio so that I can start taking on freelance jobs which means that my upload schedule might be kind of weird for a while. But that's okay, because my upload schedule is already weird. I pump out three videos in a month and then disappear for a quarter of a year. So, yeah. Next video is going to be related to this because I am obsessed. I just have no idea when it's coming out. Bye.